in some cases though, we, I mean, we're still going to be burning coal, we're going to be doing things that produce carbon, and so the last application here in this area is looking at how we can actually get rid of the CO2 that we produce. Um, this is a process called carbon um, capture and sequestration, or in this case sequestration, and it's looking how you can um, capture the, the, the carbon um, produced, for example, out of a coal burning factory and then pump it underground and, um, and store it there so that it doesn't um, impa impact the rest of the environment. And these are some simulations that have been done by uh, researchers, um, once again, at the lab, looking at these kind of how, how you, what happens when you try to sequester um, carbon. Okay, so those are um, many of the applications of, um, of computing applied to this kind of environmental problem, the global climate change problem, and how to do something to fix it. I'm going to talk next about the other big application area, um, which is really looking at health and medicine. So here I'm going to ask you to think um, kind of long term about a 20-year vision. This has been a 20-year vision, by the way, for about 10 years, so um, it kind of keeps rolling forward. But we think we're, we're actually making some progress on it. Um, and imagine that you have a digital um, body double. That is, you have a, a, a digital record of all of your images from any kind of medical records, any medical tests that you've done, um, pathology, uh, information about your, your um diagnostics and also information about whatever medications you're taking and things like that. And you can use this for a diagnosis, you can use this to um, for less invasive surgery. If they actually understand exactly what um, your internal organs look like, they can design better prosthetic devices and they can understand um, how to do surgery by um, with robots. So um, the digital human today is mostly about imaging and there are some of these uh, particular simulation problems. There's a great project online. How many people have ever looked at the visible human project? Just a couple. All right, well, I'll show you a little bit of it. The Visible Human Project is this online database. It's used a lot in, um, I think, in teaching uh, medicine, but it's used in a number of other applications in trying to understand um, the structure of the human body. Um, what they did is they took two cadavers, a male and a female, um, and they, uh, they were frozen, sort of sliced very thin, if you will, and imaged each one of those slices. So there's 18,000 sections of the body. Um, the male was sectioned and in, in, was done first, so it was lower resolution, one millimeter sections, and the female was done a little bit later at 0.3 uh, millimeter sections. And um, it was, uh, there are a number of, of, of applications of it and a number of different people that licensed this. So I'm going to show you a little movie from the Visible Human Project. You can find this movie online as well. Um, we are now flying through the human body. This is an actual human body that you're going through. Um, and uh, you're now obviously in the legs and you're going to hit the feet here in a minute. Um, and so you can see that there's all this data that shows exactly what the human body, these particular two uh, cadavers look like online. So that's the first problem. That's kind of the, when I talked about where do you get the data for climate modeling, this is the question of where do you get the data for doing something like a simulation of the human body. Um, you have to start with some very detailed images or other kinds of information. Now this is a specific to one person. The question is can you build some sort of general model so that we don't have to slice you up in order to build a model um, for each one of you that's more specialized. Um, a number of years ago, I worked on a project um, that was heart simulation. And these are actually visualizations that come from a, uh, um, a group at uh, NYU that we were working with at the time. Um, this is actually a, a PhD student who wor worked on this project a little later, but he had great movies, so I decided to use his movie rather than ours. This is showing a uh, simulation of the, the human heart and how the blood flows within the heart. Um, and what you can see here, and I'll, well, there, this is a little bit easier, easier to see with the muscle fibers, and you can see the blood um, going up and down uh, between the different, these are the ventricles, or, as all you're seeing here, the atria are up above, and there's the blood, the oxygenated blood coming down in red, and the, the deoxygenated blood there in blue. Um, so this is uh, something that you could, actually can be used to understand things like um, artificial heart valves, even artificial hearts, um, how to design these kinds of devices to make them very efficient. It was used at one point to try to understand um, how to um, treat babe, infants, newborns, that have a particular kind of heart defect. So in this heart defect, their, their heart is not really wired correctly, um, and so they, they're in danger of um, not getting enough oxygen. And what, what, they, what they do in these is because, because the infants are too small to, and, and sort of unstable to sustain a major surgery, like re, rewiring, recabling their heart, what they do first is they go in and they make a little hole in the walls of the heart so that just a little bit of the oxygenated blood mixes into the deoxygenated side, which is just enough to keep the, the baby kind of growing well enough that they can, um, they can get a little bit stronger so they can do the major surgery. And the question is, what was the optimal size and shape for that little hole to be? I'm going to use computer simulations to understand that. 
Um, hearts are just one part of the body. There are a number of other researchers who's, who've looked at other parts of the body and computer simulations of them, trying to understand how um, the lungs work. How um, And of course, what you'd like to do then is tie the heart and the lungs together to understand how the action comes from the lungs and goes into the blood system. How does this affect the kidneys? Um, and there's the, the heart itself is very complicated. It has, um, it has elect, um, electrocardiography, which is what causes the muscles themselves to contract. Um, and then it has the blood flow, which is the part that I was showing you before. Um, the blood pushes on the, um, the walls of the heart, and the walls of the heart push back on the blood. Um, and the last, uh, and one more example of a simulation is um, looking at um, how, how diseases are, are what, what causes diseases and how we can create um, uh, various kinds of um, drug treatments for these diseases. Um, there's a project by at the University of Washington by Valerie Daggett look at, called um, Dynamiomics. Um, Dynamiomics is looking at um, these proteins, but instead of just looking at a protein and its structure, you're actually mo looking at the movie of how this protein folds, or actually the simulations are done how the proteins unfold. Um, so she ran at, at our nurse center, she ran 10,000, 11,000 of these protein um, unfoldings for a related set of what are called amyloids, these proteins that are used, that are actually behind the cause of um, Alzheimer's and mad cow disease and other neurological diseases. And um, using this, they're able to understand something about um, the common patterns with these different proteins um, and, and in the way in which they fold. So it's not really that the structure of the protein is different, it's that the way in which they, they fold and unfold um, is different um, between the good, the good ones and the diseased one, and that helps them also then to design, um, design drugs. And um, so that's a, uh, another application of using computers to understand things about medicine and health. And the last one here, I've just um, put a quote, a little piece of a New York Times article that I recommend reading. There's a whole series of these about using computers to solve a number of different problems. Um, this is our own Dave Patterson, who um, is also on the faculty in the Computer Science Division, um, looking at how you use computers to um, understand cancer um, and develop treatments for, uh, uh, treatments for cancer. And this is called the Big D Applied to the Big C, so Big D is big data, and big C, of course, is cancer, um, and saying that computer scientists have a lot of what it, it may take in order to really try to figure out how to solve this big data analysis problem. So this one's not so much of a simulation problem. It's looking at lots of data that comes from genomics um, databases. There's a, a database that is um, at, the, at another um, UC school, I, I believe that's at Santa Cruz, um, that, that they're looking at, um, that has all of this cancer data, genome data in it.